All right, we will be discussing the broader impacts of the corona pandemic soon, but first I've got to get this off my chest. At the risk of sounding unpopular, it's time to put the blame squarely on you, the viewer. Scott Morrison went on national television and urged people to stop hoarding, claiming that it was selfish. That's coming from someone who's been encouraging the public to hoard houses for a decade. If he thinks you're selfish, you're probably selfish. This is a photo strip from Reddit. Look at that poor man who I'm assuming they based the character from up off. The first question being, is that Joe Biden? The second, I've always wondered how long it'd take society to resort to cannibalism if supply chains broke down. And now I know the answer is society would resort to cannibalism way before supply chains broke down. Why don't y'all come on the truck? Get you something to eat. In fact, I could go for a nice healthy siding of Matt right about now. All it took was for Nine to up the colour saturation of the spores flying behind Peter over his head. People started busing it to rural towns on supply raids like it's land of the dead. Matt thinks anyone who profiteers off of toilet paper and hand sanitizer should be chucked in jail for a month. I think that should be extended to mums who bought even two 20 packs of Quilton. Have you walked into Coles as the second wave of Huber Beggs? Everyone's staring at everyone else in utter confusion, dazed at these barren shelves, looking at each other, wondering who were these cunts? Who fucking stockpiles yogurt? On the plus side, it is amusing walking outside and seeing no one over the age of 30. It's the Simpsons episode in real life. What's going on? We're all the grown-ups. Who cares? With no adults around, I run this city! And I'm Nelson Cucks. Dirt. Carry on! So before we start blaming the government for everything, which trust me, as a millennial, I do love doing, we have to acknowledge where this government came from. Bill Maher once famously said, people are always saying, if only we had a government as good as the people. Yeah, well the problem is we do. George Carlin once said, if you have selfish, ignorant citizens, you get selfish, ignorant leaders. And when you see this... Get off me! Don't get ah! Hey, oh, fuck! That's enough. These are the quiet Australians who have won a great victory tonight. Suddenly it all makes perfect sense who these quiet Australians are. Of course that public would vote for definitively one of the worst governments on earth that does nothing on climate change, exacerbates land clearing, booby traps the economy for generations to come, just so this generation now can gorge on negative gearing for their seven investment properties because heaven forbid they only get it for a paltry six. What we've learnt this month is if there's even a hint of trouble, there's a certain percentage of the population that'll trip an elderly grandma or over, steal a walking frame and use it to jam a Coles door shut so they can have an entire supermarket to themselves. And from this week's events, I'm putting that number at 51% of the population. Matt saw a little dog walking past. He said if there was just one headline that read, toilet paper shipment delayed by three minutes, someone would start crunching into that dog like he's a fucking pear in eight seconds. The only reason they care about Corona is not what it'll do to the economy, not what it'll do to the hospital system, not what it'll do to the elderly, just what it'll do to them. Personally, This virus could have had a death rate of around 1%, but thanks to the Liberal Party floundering around as usual, it's on track to go to 4% or higher. I hope this is where Quiet Australia realises that franking credits aren't worth their family and friends dying, but as we've plainly seen from the supermarkets of this country, they trample their own mother for an SPC fruit cup. No wonder Scott Morrison was fired from Tourism Australia. Scott Morrison's messaging is worse than American pharmaceutical ads. It's like he's debating himself, and that debate is his policy in real time. Yeah, no. Ozzy Osbourne had it right in the 70s. Go bite the head off a bat now. Actually, no, stay the fuck away from bats. Unless it's the cricket, yeah, then go nuts. But don't come into the country, borders are closed. School's not though, of course it's not. I think you should be going to school even if the world's ending, let alone a cold. This is probably like the chicken pox, it'll be good for the little buggers. Just like how they ignored the bushfire warnings from the fire chiefs, they have been given a letter signed by 2,500 doctors that calls for a closure of schools, cultural and religious places including places of worship, gyms and leisure centres, pubs, bars, theatres, cinemas and concert halls. Though clearly that is the doctor's fault for not adequately wording it for a Liberal government. They needed to say 70% of the population having a potentially lethal disease will be bad for small business. If they did, everyone would be welded shut in their house within the hour. Can you just check my mail? Yeah, here's a letter for you. Dear Hoarder, Fuck you. Sincerely, me. Hey, thank you. The funding for their public health plan to battle coronavirus, the worst public health crisis since the Spanish flu, is less than what Gladys Berejiklian spent on light rail. 
less than what the Liberals spend on one section of transport in one section of one city in one state. Allow me to break down what this money is going to be spent on and keep comparing it to their actual concern, small business. $30 billion for research, oh, that sounds promising. $500 million for hospitals, that'll come in handy after the 50 billion they cut from them. $100 million for aged care, but $6.7 billion to boost cash flow for employers. This is what I mean when I say the Australian public is not good at being selfish. You keep electing a government that doesn't care about you. We will go into just how poorly targeted their stimulus package is in another video, but for now, just know there's a reason New South Wales is disproportionately exploding in cases, and it ain't because they have the biggest population. It's because of the Liberal government, amongst other issues. They're cheaping out on test kits, they're yet to release the state's coronavirus response plan like Victoria has, they're not telling parents the criteria for a full school shutdown, they're not improving sanitization and medical shortages, rather than greatly increasing the number of test kits like Victoria is, they're saying, yeah, just if you're feeling a bit sick, don't go to work. Fuck. It is insane that Labor is forced to govern from the opposition benches. Jody McKay has forced the New South Wales government to announce their stimulus package, and despite New Zealand having 60% of the population of New South Wales, their stimulus is way bigger. Stew on that like a public pool. Every major crisis in history, the GFC, deregulation of the 80s, World War II, the Great Depression, Labor's been at the helm. But because you wanted to take advantage of tax loopholes that you don't properly take advantage of, for the first time in history, the party of failed marketers and crap real estate agents is at the helm. That's who I want in charge during a pandemic. People whose training is to lie in very transparent ways. We'll be covering this in more detail soon, but if I may quote The Simpsons one more time and put Bill Shorten's head over Ray Pattinson. It's so gratifying to leave you wallowing in the mess you've made. You're screwed. Thank you. Bye. Oh, and in case you're wondering, all of my live shows have been cancelled for the foreseeable future. Turns out that COVID-19 cancels friendly Geordies. Seriously, sorry for the inconvenience to the patrons and venues. Having said that, make sure you press the like button with your elbow, and then Glade 20, your elbow! Please share and comment below. Command.